All right, so this lesson is going to be about your composition window. And uh, your composition window is here. To better understand your composition window, it helps to have some footage in it. So let's import some footage. I will go to File, Import, File. And let's find something fun. Uh, let's go to my desktop. I think I have something like the fly guy. There he is. There's the fly guy. Um, and we imported him. He is over here in the project window. Of course, we have a preview window in the project window, title, size of footage, how many frames, frames per second, trillions of colors, and Apple ProRes 422 HQ. Now, here's the deal. I'm recording this tutorial at 15 frames per second because that's just the what the software is set to. It, it won't go any higher. Um, that's just a software issue on my end. Um, so if I do a RAM preview of the footage, it will jitter as it plays back. So we won't have a full understanding of the playback, but you'll understand what I'm doing at least. Um, so to start a new composition, I can either go to composition, new composition, and of course you'll get all this and you can name it and do whatever you want and I can hit okay. And it will show up a new composition here with a black background. This black background of course has, uh, is an alpha if I, I can basically get rid of all that black and boom, there it's gone. Alternatively, I can take my fly guy footage and I can drag this down to the film strip and I can create another composition. I'm gonna leave these two open just so we can uh, we can play between the two of them. Uh, first off, with uh, this particular footage, you'll see there, here that um, we ha the first thing we have is always preview this view. This allows us to switch between cameras and stuff like that. So if you have multiple cameras and you want to just look at this particular view when you have like, let's say camera two, camera three, side camera, up, uh, top camera, this allows you to, when you play back, it will always go back to this camera. The next would be um, your fit. So we can fit our footage up to whatever we want and we'll resize it. All right, even beyond what we can see pixel wise. All right, so let's fit, fit it up to 100%. There we go. Um, as we resize our panel of our, our uh, composition view, of course, everything resizes itself automatically. Uh, the next button will be uh, choose grid and guide options. This allows us to choose our title safe area. Of course, uh, just a quick rundown. Title safe happens to deal with your TV aspect ratio. And uh, usually what you work in doesn't show up 100% on the screen. So this box here, is with everything within this box is usually what you will see uh, within the HD realm or the TV realm because this extra data, this extra information tends to get cut off by your TV. You know, that's just how it is. Um, but some TVs are actually kind of making up for this in other ways because um, you'll have like your zoom views on your TV. Anyway, that's something completely different. But this will, you want to keep all your action within this bounding box basically. All right. Um, click it again we got proportional grids this allows you to of course measure your distance you can control this as well within other functions you have guides there we go so you can get even more in depth and rulers and the rulers allows you to like you can click here and then you can kind of move things there you know you click here boom there we go so I want to go into this point you know what I mean so, or let's go here, I'll go here, yeah, to that one, yeah, and then we'll come here, and we'll go to that point, see? So you can actually, let's get rid of our grid. You can actually set, whoops, sorry, I got rid of my guides. There we go. So you can actually frame things up and say you want to look at this point, or that point, or this point. Now let's get rid of that, because it's going to get annoying. Whoops, there we go, guides, let's get rid of rollers. All right, the next would be um, toggle mask and shape path visibility. So this is great. All right, if I click on this, of course, it's going to show. Um, there's a tool up here, a rectangular tool. If I click on this and just drag, I'm going to get a, a shape layer. Of course, this is future, future tutorial stuff. But for now, if I click on my, my uh, footage, I can go back to my rectangle tool. And it will, it'll basically mask and make a mask or thus a, a, a garbage mat of that area. If I click on this little icon down here, toggle mask and shape path visibility, you'll lose the outside um, of the, that uh, mask. It'll hide the actual mask, which is great, all right? Uh, because when you're dealing with multiple layers and you have this stuff all over the place, it'll, it'll get obnoxious, you know, drive you crazy. So don't do that at Apple Z. Uh, right next to it is your current time. 
you can go anywhere within your time frame, your timeline, and uh, you will get you will get a uh, a little update. It'll tell you what frame you're on. If you click that, you can actually edit it and go to let's say 24. Boom! There you go. It's at frame 24. Uh, snapshot. Take a snapshot. Click that, and that will be your reference. You know. So you can always go back to that as a reference. Um, this is show your snap snapshot. See, boom. There we go. And then show channel and color management settings. It tells you what you're working on, working in and working on. Um, this is your resolution. Uh, this is used for basically uh, when you have multiple layers and you're trying to RAM preview or you're trying to roto something or you're going bonkers because your machine's just not working the way they want it to. You usually need to downgrade your resolution. Um, I work in quarter. Of course, quarter is very pixelated. I work in this resolution a lot because I deal with uh, anywhere between 20 layers to hundreds of layers. Um, and when you have multiple layers and multiple compositions, things start to get bogged down. Um, and you usually end up in quarter. Um, but for now, we're in full. There you go. It also sets automatic, so the machine will automatically adjust to whatever you're doing. Uh, region of interest allows you to focus on a specific area, of course. Oops, let's undo that by just clicking the button. And then, of course, this is the transparent toggle grid. Now, if I go back to my, when, I, when I did that little mask here, let's do that mask again. Um, you see this black area here. This is all empty space. This empty space is actually an alpha channel. If I click on that, you get this this grid. This shows you that there is nothing there. So when I export this, that will be either black, or if I export it as a PNG with an alpha channel, or a, a specific QuickTime movie with an alpha channel, um, this will be a see-through layer. So then you can lay this layer on top of, or lay your composition on top of another composition. Very handy in the, f in the future when you're going to be dealing with uh, multiple uh, work with other people or uh, with yourself when you're trying to, you know, let's say your footage is like just bogged down and you, you need to render it out so that way you can keep working with it. It's a good way of dealing with that. You can render it out with your alpha channels. All right, so that deals with that. Uh, your active camera. All right, this is going to be interesting. We have an ap active camera. And you have uh, front view, left view, top view, back view. Watch this. If we click on top view, nothing, right? Back view, nothing. Front view, okay, yeah. Uh, the deal is it needs to be a 3D layer to really work. To deal with that, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to click on in my uh, timeline. I'll click on this little cube area right there. I've just turned this flag. I see these handles here. This is X, Y, and Z axis. Now if I go to top view or left view, this line here is actually the side view of that front view, all right? Same thing with the top, all right? To really understand this, we go to active camera and then your next one next to that will actually be select view layouts and go here and I'm, I'm gonna do four views. Boom, four views. And you'll see here that we have top, active camera, right bottom, or right front. If I do this and I'm gonna click this little arrow here, arrow here. in fact, I need to be in my, uh, my selection tool, Z, Y, okay? click on the z-axis and I'm going to bring it forward. Look at that. In the active view, it's coming closer to you. This is 3D depth. All right, You're moving something within a 3D environment. I can make it move up, move back, you know, and uh, that deals with that. Now the front view, of course, that will only deal with left, right, and up and down. Uh, it won't do forward and back because it's the very, very front view of that, that object selected. Um, now see it won't do it so now um, let's say we don't want to be in 3d undo it boom it's all there all right you have multiple objects in the same space and you'll be able to do deal with that we'll deal with that in the future of course um, the next one of, of the icons is toggle pixel aspect ratio correction when you're dealing with DV footage a lot of times the DV footage won't come in at 16 by 9 or even uh, another one is uh, 1440 by 1080 which is actually an HD format um, it comes in and it looks like it's a square. You click on this and it will actually make it 16 by 9 proper, at least with the working view. Um, the fast previews, this has to deal with your graphics card and your OpenGL and your GL, all that nonsense that uh, basically deals with your uh, previews. And then this one here is your timeline. And of course, it goes down to your timeline. Um, this is your workflow or composition flow chart. And of course, all we have right now is this. And click on that and we'll show you um, how the layers are kind of going and what they are. Let's go back. 
whoops, I'm in the wrong one here. Boom, boom, there we go. Of course, I was in the tabs. Um, and then the following one after that is um, your exposure level, okay? So what this is, is let's say I'm gonna be rotoing uh, this black against this black and I can't really see it. I can raise and, and, and uh, shrink my, make it lighter or darker, the color that I'm working in. And it doesn't really affect the actual render it will just affect what I'm working in at that po point. And you can hide all that by just clicking this little, this little aperture button here, all right? So that pretty much covers everything. Um, of course, you can undock all this stuff. It's, you know, dock it, lock it, you know, a little lock button, toggle view, viewer lock. Um, but for the most part, that covers uh, the composition window. Uh, stick around and check out the next, next tutorial, which will be the timeline.